I was talking about cumulative frequency today. You guys are going to be able to calculate cumulative frequency, use stem and leaf plots, and well, I should say find variance and standard deviation for Friday. Okay? Uh, but not only calculate the cumulative frequency curves, but also be able to graph them yourself, as well as find information from the cumulative frequency graph. So, to calculate the cumulative frequency, what you do is you add up the frequencies of the data values as you go along, hence cumulative, okay? It's as you go along, it's the sum. The cumulative frequency curve is another way uh, to calculate the median, the quartiles, uh, percentiles, of a large set of group or continuous data, okay? So, let's move around to you have 50 batteries were tested to see how long they are lasted. The results and hours are shown in the table. You have to draw a cumulative frequency diagram and find the median and interquartile range. So we have the times, we have the frequency. This is just normal standard frequency, okay? So to find your cumulative frequencies, which is what you use to actually draw a cumulative frequency curve, you actually need to determine what they are. Cumulative, of course, the first time it is just going to be three. Okay, we can start out with you know three pieces of data there. But then the next group, you basically add those two numbers together. So it would be eight. After that, it would be 16. After that, 26, 38, 45, and then 50. Okay, and with the cumulative frequency table, that last number should be the total amount that you actually have. It should be your end. Okay? So that's one way you can always check to make sure you did it correctly. Sometimes they may give you a cumulative frequency table and they ask you to find your normal frequency table. Okay? You have to be able to realize that it's just the opposite way. 50 minus 45 is 5. 45 minus 38 is 7. So on and so forth. Okay? We're good? So let's make sure we label our graph. We always want to make sure that we do that so our bottom, our horizontal axis is going to be what? Time. Time and our vertical? Batteries. Number. Number. No, not number of batteries. How long is it lasting? How long Cumulative batteries? frequency. That's what it said. Cumulative frequency. So we're drawing a cumulative frequency diagram. So we need to have somewhere and then time. Always make sure you label, no need to lose points. Please be easy points. Um, this is one centimeter graph paper. And so my suggestion to you is how should you use this? Do it by fours. <laughs> so, the one thing I'll say about your scale, guys, is, is you got to be careful because we're actually going to be using this to answer future questions. So, the crazier our scale, the harder it might be to actually pull out the answers for, like, the median and for the interquartile range, okay? So, how are you guys labeling this? You're using? Every four spot five. Every four spot five? So then, so, then that means that this thing is going to be 1.25 and this is going to be 2. No. What do you think? Yeah, one point two five. Okay, so if you want to do that, I don't know. fine. I don't know. What I, I, I do you I, want to do every two? I mean, I would say that ten every five. Ten every five. Ten every five. So then it'll be two, four, six, eight. I mean, it's fine. It's your drawing. Whatever scale this thing to it, be consistent. Okay. Five. This is a horrible copy I have here. Five. All right. How should we label our y-axis? This does represent a cumulative frequency, so we need to at least make sure we hit 50. So what? Every five is 10. Every five is 10. Okay, so we'll go by 10 again. Y'all are the haters of cumulative frequency. And so basically all you do is you graph it. Now, one thing, since this is a uh, interval, okay, there are intervals here, 
And since the upper bound of one group is the same as the upper bound of the other group, then you are going to use these numbers as like your set number that you plot, okay? If, say this was, um, say this was five and the next one was six, it would be the average between the two, just like it would be if you were graphing a histogram, okay? So, at five, we'll be at three, okay? So, at five, we'll be at three. At 10, we'll be at eight. At 15, 16, and so on and so forth. Okay? Uh huh, because you're graphing the cumulative. Oh, yeah. You're only doing them on the big side, right? Yeah, the purple. No. Time, you're right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now this is a curve, so you want to make sure that when you draw your curve that connects all the points, it is smooth, okay? And also, where is this going to start? Because it's not going to start at 5, 3. Where is it going to start? Zero. zero. So you're going from zero, and you're connecting all these points together. So make sure you draw a smooth curve to connect. All right, so we are going to find the median, okay? And do you remember that formula that I gave you? Why should I need the one for median? But you can do n plus 1 divided by 2 to find your median, okay? This formula here. So then you can do 51 divided by 2, which is? 25.5. Now, this does not tell you what your median is. It tells you where on your cumulative frequency curve to look to find your median. Did everybody catch that? Man, did you catch it? Median halfway through. Okay, right. It's a good one. You don't want over versus one under. Okay. So you go up to your y axis to 25.5. And then you go over and you see where it hits your curve. For me, it hits my curve actually on one of my lines versus if I did 50 divided by 2 and only went to 20. <laughs> and so I'm here, and so my median is actually my x value, which will be what? 20. 20. How smooth the curve? What's the scale I did? Or did you go by horses? What? Did you go by trees? What did he do? Here we go. Keep one. Okay? We gave that formula the other day. That is n plus 4 divided by 4. What is 51 divided by 4? So, that does not tell you what P1 is, it tells you where to find it. So you go up to 12.75, which is a little bit under 13. You draw your line over, and you see, excuse me, you see where it hits your curve. You drop down another perpendicular, and then that is going to be your Q1. Now the one thing about these two with statistics, and you draw your own curves or your own history, or your own scatter plots, whatever. They'll, they'll say, you know, give or take one or two. Okay, they will say give or take one or two, depending. Now, if they give you an actual cumulative frequency curve, and then they want you to find this information, then that, that's when, you know, the whole give or take one or two is gone. Yes? So, you guys have It's where 
point is where that particular horizontal line hits your curve. Yeah, but it doesn't Is that is that on your is it on your curve? Well, my curve, I can, it says it is. Oh no, your point is really twenty twenty six. Yeah. The point you're at up there, twenty twenty six. Now for Q three, that was the formula we talked about the other day. That's three times n plus one divided by four. What is 51 times 3 divided by 4? Now, if you got 26, then that's fine. But you're using your curve. You are using your curve. So if you messed up your curve, Matthew, then you use the cuts. I messed up the middle section and it ruined the rest of our graph. So then your inner quartile range is what? What is your inner quartile range? Actually, that's it. Now here, what I see hit the curve 
What did you guys put on the show? 72. 72. You put that. It should be 72. It's like 73.5. Can I just throw some guesses in there? Don't let me know all you want to. Man, you can do When you take uh, 101 and multiply by 3 and divide by 4, you get what? Okay, that's going to be a little closer than 76, but yet we're still <coughs> right above that line. <laughs> now, let me guess. It you guys put 77.5. 77. <laughs> sense that it was a really big compared to graph. Because it feels like 300 or something and it builds up to like sit there and it's not graphing. Well, you know how 300 normally works. And it's but if, it's, if it's not graphing really, then it's just making it. Stimuli plots. These are another way to represent data. Uh, just like box and whiskers, histograms, and cumulative frequency curves. With every stimuli plot, they do give you a key down at the bottom to tell you what everything represents. So do be aware that this is not 1.80 or, you know, 240 centimeters. This actually is represented in dollars. Okay? So if you have something like this, this represents $710, so on and so forth. Okay? And then here's another example. That scores, they actually cut off the key, but every stimuli plot does have a key. You can use this <coughs> the same way to find um, medians and interquartile ranges and things like that. Okay? Uh, each leaf counts as, um, as a dollar amount, as a, a number that's along your, your piece of data. Your piece of data, so you have one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You have 15 pieces of data. Okay, so your leaves tell you how many pieces of data you have. And anything else you want to say about the So, if you want to list them out, you can. You can use the formulas and everything there. Questions? Would an editor, would an editor use the stems or leaves? It would be the leaves. Tell you, you know, like there's multiple ones here. 